15 things you didn't know about Christian Le Bouton. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, dear Aluxers, and welcome back to our channel. We've been thinking lately, don't you feel that style rhymes with stiletto? Okay, maybe that's a stretch, but we'll use any reason to talk about today's star. As you know, we want you to feel as stylish as possible, and this is precisely why we thought it would be a great idea to talk about the one and only Christian Le Bouton. Born on January 7, 1963 in Paris, Christian Le Bouton is the only son of Roger, a cabinet maker, and Irene. He has three sisters, with whom he spent most of his childhood because his father used to work long hours and not stay at home much. Ever since he was a child, he was atypical, non-conformist, which is deeply reflected in his work. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. His designs nowadays are absolute must-haves. His style is a trademark of elegance and wit. So let's just skip the intro and talk about those 15 things you didn't know about Le Bouton. Number 1. Le Bouton was expelled from school several times. Showing little interest in school as he grew up, apparently he was unable to fit the school standards of the time. The third time he was expelled, he was only 12 years old, and that was when he decided to run away from home. After scaring his parents, he finally managed to convince his mother to allow him to move out and live at a friend's house. He continued his studies, but eventually dropped out of high school at age 16, in spite of the strong opposition he had faced from his parents. Le Bouton claims he was inspired to make that decision by Sophia Loren's sister, who had to leave school at age 12, but managed to get her degree when she turned 50. Number 2. He found his fascination for shoe design in a museum. Le Bouton has told the story of the time in 1976 when he visited the National Museum of African Arts in Paris. That was where he saw exhibited a sign from Africa that forbade women wearing sharp stilettos from entering a building for fear of damage to the expensive wood flooring. The image stayed with him for years, fueling his desire to create shoes as a form of resistance. In his own words, I wanted to defy that. I wanted to create something that broke rules and made women feel confident and empowered. Number 3. He first worked at the famed Parisian cabaret Folie Berger. After dropping out of high school, Le Bouton worked at Folie Bergère, being in charge of all sorts of jobs for the dancers backstage. It is there where he fulfilled his personal dream of creating shoes for them, progressively learning the ins and outs of the shoe business. He subsequently managed to land a job with Charles Jordan in the early 1980s before working with Roger Vivier, the inventor of stiletto, or spiked heeled shoe. Being Vivier's apprentice played a major role in Le Boutin's growth, and the result doesn't cease to be acclaimed by buyers worldwide. Number 4. He often assumed he was adopted. In an interview he gave in 2012, Le Boutin explained he questioned the blood links to his family because he was much darker skinned than the rest of them. He explained that he didn't feel French, but he decided not to focus on finding his presumed family, but rather to invent his own history full of characters from Egypt because he was very into the pharaohs. Ironically or not, in 2014, he found out that he was indeed a product of a passionate affair his mother had with an Egyptian man. Now, how's that for twisted and erotic? Number 5. Le Bouton's net worth is $85 million. Yeah, you heard well. The footwear designer has an estimated net worth of $85 million, which is plausible when you think about the fact that Le Bouton's shoes sell from $495 and up. The base price for a custom made pair of Le Bouton is $4,000, and it can go up to $6,000 if we're talking about crystal encrusted pairs. Nowadays, the brand owns nearly 50 boutiques in about 22 countries, and we all have to agree that the famous shoes command awe and respect, thus becoming a must-have in every luxurious wardrobe. So, have you bought your pair already? Number 6. Le Bouton himself went through a punk phase back in the 70s. Before becoming a trademark young designer, Christian Le Bouton went through a punk phase. Because of this, he took the chance to appear in a few films, including 1979 cult classic Oras Depp, a documentary made by Lionel Soukas and Guy Hoc Enyem. 
He also appeared in the movie The Homosexual Century, which attracted an English language audience. It was around that time that he started making connections in the fashion world, also having a fixture in the city's party scene, clubbing his nights away alongside Mick Jagger and Andy Warhol. This diamond had to see it all. Number 7. Le Bouton's famous red soles were inspired by nail polish. Ever wonder where those brilliantly designed trademark red-soled shoes originated from? It seems like it was one of Christian's employees that inspired him. The beautiful red nail polish she used to wear inspired the fashion designer. On the other hand, those same red soles inspired a manicure called the Le Bouton Manicure making the circle complete. The trend involved painting the underside of the fingernail tip red and the top of the nail black, so what looked like normal black polish delivered a quick flash of red, much like catching a fleeting glimpse of a Le Bouton soul. If this isn't classy from pinky to toe, we don't know what is. Number 8. He needed the help of two financial backers to launch his company. In spite of working hard and proving great talent, Le Bouton was still working as a freelance shoe designer in the 1980s. At some point, he created heels for the collections of Chanel and Yves Saint Laurent, as well as Maud Friesen, another shoe designer with immense name brand cash for the time. Eventually, he managed to launch his own company with the help of two financial backers, opening the first shoe boutique in Paris in November 1991. One of his first famous customers was Princess Caroline of Monaco, which quickly helped popularize the brand, and considerably, especially through the attention of the press. Number 9. Whenever he finds a place he enjoys, Louboutin buys a house there. Louboutin said that himself, and there's proof that he acts that way. Christian and his partner, landscape architect Louis Benesch, owns several homes, one in the first arrondissement of Paris, a palace in Aleppo, a fisherman-style cottage in Lisbon, a home in Luxor, and a houseboat on the mighty Nile. Living in luxury much? Oh wait, but there's more. Christian Le Bouton shares a 13th century Vendi castle with Bruno Chamberlain, his business partner. It seems like he likes to take back from the world as much as he's giving it, and style is always expensive. Number 10. The first shoes he designed were inspired by Princess Diana. You know how they say Le Bouton shoes are royal? There's an explanation for that. The very first shoes Christian ever designed were inspired by the famous image of Diana, Princess of Wales, sitting in front of the Taj Mahal during her visit to India in 1992. Le Bouton explained once during an interview that the sad way in which Princess Diana looked at her feet in the picture inspired him. He designed the shoes willing for her to have something to make her smile when she looked at her feet. Thus, he made a pair of flat suede pumps with the word love written in his signature red, L-O on the left foot and V-E on the right. Who wouldn't smile at love? How would you like to learn more about Princess Diana? Oh, as always, we've got you covered. Go check out our 15 Things You Didn't Know About Princess Diana video. You'll definitely feel more inspired, both as a human and as a fashion addict. Number 11. Christian Le Bouton Thinks He Doesn't Have Enough Shoes and no, we're not talking about the merchandise in his boutiques. La Boutin himself has a huge personal shoe collection, with over 100 pairs in his Paris home alone. However, he often finds himself thinking he doesn't have the right shoes for this or that occasion. Missing the right pair of shoes is a great source of inspiration for him, as his mind often flies away and makes him imagine new designs. He's also sort of a shoe fetishist, which you could totally expect from someone who spent his lifetime doing this. He keeps his shoes in categories as well. Spike embellished in one cupboard, metal tipped in another, and sneakers in another. Number 12. His biggest client is Danielle Steele. The fourth best-selling author of all time, American novelist Danielle Steele is reported to own over 6,000 pairs of Le Bouton shoes and is known to have purchased up to 80 pairs at a single time when shopping at his stores. So that's what a motivated woman looks like, huh? Anyways, she's not the only one. Le Bouton's list of celebrity clients includes Catherine Devenu, Jennifer Lopez, Madonna, Tina Turner, Nicki Minaj, Sarah Jessica Parker, Britney Spears, and so on. His brand clearly is the celebrity's cup of tea. Number 13. Le Bouton explained he will never consider doing a lower price line. 
Which makes perfect sense if we take into consideration that the brand topped the Luxury Institute's Annual Luxury Brand Status Index, or LBSI, for three years. The brand's offerings were declared the most prestigious women's shoes in 2007, 2008, and again in 2009. By 2011, Le Bouton became the most searched for shoe brand online. The designer explained that, in his opinion, a lower priced line would compromise quality. In his own words, it would offend me to put my name on a design I would not be proud of. It's non-negotiable. When you've reached the top of the heel, I mean world, it's hard to settle for any less, it seems. Number 14. La Bouton published a book for the brand's 20th anniversary. In 2011, La Bouton celebrated his 20th anniversary with a new self-titled book published by Rizzoli. The item was bound in pink faux leather with gilded pages and a five-piece fold-out cover. Its purpose was to cover both the designer's most iconic styles and an insight into his influences. The book's foreword was written by actor John Malkovich, who is a close friend of his, and some of the photos were courtesy of David Lynch. The book is divided into six chapters, Le Bouton's biography, the interiors of the label's international stores, a chart of 20 years of Le Bouton design, followed by intimate photographs of the designer's Paris and Egypt homes, while the last two chapters explore his collaborations. At launch, the book's retail price was $150. Number 15. Le Bouton's red sole is protected as a trademark in several countries, which obviously led to various disputes in which Le Bouton claimed infringement of its rights, thus trying to fight copiers and counterfeiters. Among the most famous cases are Belgium, Le Bouton vs. Dr. Adam's footwear, which he won, as well as several trials he lost in France, Switzerland, and even the United States. The most recent blow the brand suffered came from a ruling in the European Court of Justice that, in February 2018, overturned a ruling that had temporarily forced the Dutch company Van Haren to cease making its brand of red-soled shoes. According to the court, Le Bouton's red soles are not a separate entity from the shape of his high-heeled shoes, and shapes usually cannot be trademarked under European Union law. And that's it for today, my dear Aluxers. Thanks for choosing to spend some time with us today. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you liked what you saw, and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, we're curious to know, Aluxers, do you think Le Bouton's red sole should be protected under trademark? Let us know by commenting below. Still here? Good. As always, here's your bonus fact. Number 16. Each Christian Le Bouton boutique is different. So, there are 53 Le Bouton boutiques around the world, and someone took the time to decorate each and every one of them differently. As you might have guessed, it was Christian Le Bouton himself who designed all of them. Maybe it's that kind of passion and devotion for your work that makes you go from selling 200 pairs of shoes a year to 700,000 pairs per year. Basically, their shoe sales rake in around $300 million every year. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.